Boo, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your headphones down. Turn them down. Are you ready to get your Halloweeny on, weenies? Because it's weenie time. Are you ready to get your Halloweenies weaned? Happy Halloween. Halloween. You're basically saying happy holiday. 100%. Happy holiday. Happy Halloween. It's episode 40. Happy episode 40. Co- I want to say cock sucking, <laughs> dick licking 40. I promised myself. She said myself. I want to say and then said it. I promised myself that I would cuss less on this podcast. She said she was listening to the last pod and every third word was the F word. Which, I'm like, you know, I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sitting there getting my lashes done because that's when I listen to the pod and I've got my headphones in and I'm really aggressively trying not to laugh, but it's really hard <laughs> when you're listening to yourself talk about shoving a sushi roll up your vagina up your cunt i i literally i kept it in, i held it in the whole opening we're screaming pink pony girls i kept it in i think she thought i must have been listening to a comedy show or something we say that i was like bah! yeah madison texted me she's like ali i just had to apologize for my lash lady she, she like jolted back like i literally lost all self-control so well, and it was funny because then she was like do you have a podcast <laughs> And I was like, yes. She was like, I just saw you on my TikTok the other day. And I was like, yeah, that's what I'm cracking up about right now. It's fine. <laughs> well, at least we know that someone finds us entertaining, even if it may just be you and I, because when I was editing the last podcast, I was sending Madison like blooper clips. It's violent. <laughs> it was really funny. So cheers to Bat Therapy episode 40. Thank you for sticking in with us all this time. Yeah, if you've been here this whole time, drop a comment. You a bad bitch. Tink. Chug. Let's just start from the beginning before we get into the podcast. I had a day from hell. I was in a terrible mood and Madison calls me in the middle of me dealing with some work stuff. And she's like, what, do you want to be a, well, have a cop in a Peaky Blinders hat? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but you, could be a, you could be a detective. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, sure. Bring the hat over. So Madison shows up looking like a cop <laughs> like a hat. and she brings me this hat. It's a fedora. <laughs> it's the ugliest. It is so ugly. And that's okay. You know, that's all she brought me. And she goes, you're a detective. I said, Madison, what does a detective wear? So I tried. I put my hair in braids. I put the hat on. I put this leather fucking She looked like Peaky on. Blinders. She actually did look like Peaky Blinders. Yeah. From the angle that the camera's at, I, we do like a little test shot beforehand. I looked at it. I said, Madison, I cannot. you've got me fucked up. She's already having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to pivot. And now I'm Harley Quinn. But I didn't have blue eyeshadow. So... Just don't comment on that. It's not accurate enough. But. Try not to judge. We did our very, very best. We tried. We were trying to be in the spirit of Halloween. Halloween, by the time this podcast is up, Halloween will be in two days. And Which, that's exciting. I'm I love, super excited. I love Halloween. I love Halloween. I want to ask the viewers, do you guys like go out anymore? for Halloween because I've been dealing with the existential crisis of a late 20s mm. adult woman where it's like I want to go rage my beans off dressed as a bunny slut <laughs> and have the time of my life. Honestly, I think it depends on where you live. For sure. Because, because there's Reno, there's nothing to do here. There's no parties. Downtown is lame. LA, California, 100%. You're going out. Anywhere else, I don't know. Which New is, York probably has a bunch of fun. Oh, like, New York like, for in a, sure. A big city. But, I mean, like, people still go out here and there's a part of me that's like, should I go out to a lame party in a lame barn just so I can dress up? There's also a part of me that's like, I'm an adult woman. I should get sleep and like go to work. Yeah. If my job didn't drain the absolute fuck out of me, then maybe I would consider doing fun things on the weekends. But nothing sounds fun anymore because I'm always so tired. Anyways, you don't really listen to me complain. Allie has a full-time plus job right now and also a new man. I've officially lost her to the sauce. Like, you know when your <laughs> best friend gets like a new man, like kind of a new job and they're just like gone. I can not and you're like <laughs> that is i've been around and i'm still around unfortunately it's more my job than my new man for sure <laughs> like, and i can't talk shit like in the beginning of my relationship i was like i just like don't really want to go out you're still that way like respectfully you are married now almost and he's always there which we've grown to love him but there is that we've grown to love him <laughs> <laughs> it's like damn i always loved him <laughs> I've grown to love him being around, but you know, there's like a learning curve that you go through when your best friend who you used to spend solo time with doing like crazy fun And you're both things. single. Yeah. yeah. Just having the time of your life to like pivoting to having their boyfriend with you and her. It's like the three amigos, the three musketeers. Granted, he's cool. We get along. That's great. But there is still a different feeling when 
their boyfriend is around. He's not a rager. Like I'll say, I'll be the first to say it. The la- I'm not the first to say it, but I will be the last <laughs> to say it. He's not a rager, which I love that about him because yeah. I wouldn't want to date a party Balance. boy. But there definitely is times where it's like, I want to go be rageth. And he's like, I don't. Even just in general though, like we could be going to dinner. Uh, you're you're pretty good at, at separating that stuff. But like, say we we're not raging. Your boyfriend's usually still with you or your fiance. Yeah, he's he's with me. So not like, like obviously I'm used to it now and yeah. I enjoy his company. He's part of the fam. In the club, we all fam. However, That's there's funny. a... There's a <laughs> In the club, we, we all, all fam. fam. But there was a learning curve, and Madison hasn't experienced that with me thus far. I, you know, I went through it with her long ago when it was like toxic, immature relationships, and I lost her to the abyss. <laughs> this is like one of those relationships where it's like, okay, it's healthy, it's normal. Like you spend a healthy, normal amount of time with each other. But it's funny because it's like I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm like married now. We've been together for years, and I'm yeah. like. I would like to be free. Like, <laughs> obviously not from him, but like. A moment in time. I want to go out. And yeah. she's like new in her relationship. And it's like, I want to spend time with my man. Yeah, she's like, let's go out. And I'm like, I want to be home with Bay. Yeah. I like, I want to be cuddled up. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. like, I have any right yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, you really don't. But I do get where you're coming from. We're just entering new eras. But can we just talk about how hard it is to lose one of your friends to a significant relationship? Because it's like your best friend... That is a significant relationship to you. Like you're together all That's of the your, time. You knew them before that guy ever knew them. I mean, when you think about how much time we spent together, that was, we were dating. <laughs> 100%. And then, you were my first healthy relationship. And there's, <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> you were. And then there's somebody else that comes in and just like puts a wedge in what you had going. And you're not allowed to care because it's a healthy, happy what wedge you for your say? partner. But like I had them first. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> well, but hold on. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, it's it's definitely a hard thing to grasp, but it's good in the end overall. It's the circle of life. Like you yeah. grow up, you find a mate. You don't really get a choice. You procreate honestly. or not. I think like there are certain things that I have to come to terms with still being your friend. Like when you start talking about babies, I'm like, hold the fuck. Oh, like relax. Because I just got used to you being full time married and you're not even married yet. You know, like there's definitely there's levels to this shit when you lose your best friend. Because not like you having a baby means I'm losing you, but kind of. It changes my ability to be available for you. 100%. Because it changes the priority that you are in my life. Not mm-hmm. that you will ever be any less important to me because you'll always be the most important thing. But when you're married, yeah. and you have kids, it's that your family. Priority. Yeah. And priority. if it's not, then you need to check yourself. Yeah. Because you cannot be putting your friendships and your partying and you're drinking and you're you cannot put your own desires before the desires of your family if you want to have a successful family 100 and if you're a good friend then you're able to recognize that but it doesn't change the learning curve i could be just for lack of a better term that you go through when adjusting to all of the changes when losing your best friend especially if this person has been your best friend through the years of childhood young adulthood and everything before that person came along growing into an adult in itself is a learning curve there are growing pains and everything is new and people start changing and life becomes different. You get big girl jobs, big boy jobs. Everyone's off doing their own thing. And then relationships get thrown in the It's an adjustment. Yeah. If you don't grow together... You You grow grow apart. apart. Yeah. And if you can't figure out how to grow together, then, you know, your relationship wasn't going to withstand the years anyway, because people change constantly. Life is constantly becoming something new. And that's how you know your relationship has legitimate depth. Yeah. I have so many friends that I used to party with. I don't even remember their names. Yeah. No, for sure. Like there's a difference between having party friends and actual real friendship. And I think when you say you grow together or you grow apart, it really just comes down to who is willing to grow with with you who has the same vision in mind and who just cares and understands and loves you enough to be a part of that journey with you even if they're on a different path. Totally. And do they respect you enough? Because yeah. as somebody who's not on the same path as you, it's really easy to be like, we don't have anything in common anymore. I don't want to be your friend anymore. It's happened to me recently, actually, as I've grown and as I've progressed. I had someone who I considered a longtime best friend, someone who I thought was going to be a bridesmaid, tell me that we are just going in different directions. And I'm like, what direction that I I'm going in is so offensive to you. Mm -hmm. Being happy, being in love, being responsible. Something that they cannot relate to. I'm like, and then it just takes you back to that place where you're like, I shouldn't take it personally. It's not about me. It's about you. Yeah. My life, my trajectory makes you insecure. And if your friend is jealous,
jealous of you, they are not your friend. Mm -mm. If you have friends that are anything but excited and happy for you when you are reaching new milestones in your life, then it's probably because of jealousy and you probably are better off without that person anyways. If you're in different areas of your life and on different paths and they can't see the commonalities and just be happy for you, then that person was never rooting for you in the first place. 100% and it's definitely hard to learn that people that you thought were really down for you are not. But the easiest way to tell that somebody is not down for you is when you're not doing exactly what they want you to do or exactly what they're used to you doing and they stop supporting you. Because we're not always gonna be on the same trajectory in life. We're not gonna be on the same path. We have different timelines, different experiences and different goals and aspirations. And if somebody can't be respectful of that and still be your friend, even if they're still in the bars doing Molly at 27, because I don't care. Yeah. Do your thing, girl. But if you can't be supportive of my husband and my babies and my success, then you have got to get away from me. And that is the truest example of friendship is when somebody doesn't understand you, but still loves and supports you regardless. Like you don't have to agree with everything your friend does. If your friend is a good person and your values and your morals align, then at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter if they're marrying a purple elephant. You could have a friend in your life that loves Trump and you love Biden. Mm -hmm. They're pro-life and you're pro-choice. They are just completely different in you than all of their thought process, all of their ways of life. But if they are respectful and you are respectful and you can have a reciprocative relationship, that doesn't matter. The only time stuff like that becomes a problem is when somebody tries to project their opinions, project their emotions onto yours and invalidates the way that you feel by saying that they're right and you're wrong. I think the key to this conversation and the point that we're trying to make is a true friend will always respect you and understand you even if they don't always agree with you because friendship isn't based on what your beliefs are or what you're currently doing or even necessarily how you choose to live your life. Friendship is based on the deep-rooted love and care that you feel for somebody and support that you're willing to give to a person regardless of what they give you in return. This is the best advice I've ever received. Relationships aren't always going to be 50-50 because one day your partner might come home and all they have to offer you is 20. That doesn't make them a bad partner. That just means it's your day to put in 80. And when you're having a bad day and when you can't take care of the kids that day because you had a long day at work or you can't do this or you can't do that and you need help, your partner is there to pick up the slack. And there will be days when both of you are at 20, but you support each other through that. But you cannot go through a relationship always expecting 50-50 if you're not always giving 50-50 because that is not reality. Reality is some days we need a break and some days we can't give our all. And that is when your partner steps up and picks up the slack for you. And that's love. And that is so accurate because there's days when I can give 1% and my partner gives 99. As long as you're always at 100 in some way, shape, or form, you're going to be okay. But if someone is consistently giving 20 and you're consistently giving 80, you're going to burn out. You're going to get resentment. 100%. It has to be reciprocated, right? Like if you're always the one that's like, I'm at 80% and they're at 20, but they're having a bad day. No, I'm talking about when it's 50-50, like 90% of the time, but then there's days where they're having a bad day. They're they're feeling sad, Some they're going through something, something's going on where they cannot give you all that you need. If you love someone, it should be a natural instinct to step up to the plate, to like fill them with happiness. Like you see your partner struggling and they're upset or they're sad or they're having a bad day. You love them, you want to make them feel better. If your partner's cup is empty, you should want to fill it. Yeah. If you don't want to fill it, you probably shouldn't be with them. Right. And vice versa. If your cup is empty and your partner does everything in God's green earth to avoid filling your cup, there's nothing that you can do about that. You're just going to end up feeling empty. You can beg and beg and beg somebody to love you and care about you and appreciate you and show you that they love you and do all of these things, but nobody is doing shit unless they actually want to. If somebody that you're with wants to show you that they love you, they're going to do it. You don't have to ask them. You don't have to beg them. You don't have to wonder. It will never be a question because it's so easy when you actually want something, you do it. I will say this over and over and over again. You are not ready for marriage if you're not ready to put your partner's needs above your own. Because if you can't put aside your own selfish needs and desires to make sure that your partner is being taken care of, you're not ready for what marriage is going to cost. Because marriage is not easy. Like, let's be for real. You cannot just show up to a marriage with the same thought process and the same habits that you had through your childhood and your teenage years and expect that to carry you through a marriage. In a marriage, you have to sacrifice, constantly sacrifice. 
twice to make sure that your relationship is healthy, for one thing, that your partner is satisfied, and God forbid you have children, that your entire family is taken care of. And obviously I can't relate 100% to the marriage talk because I'm fucking two weeks into a new relationship. But the same thing goes for if you're in a relationship. Like you cannot expect to just live the same life that you're used to living when you enter into a relationship. Unfortunately, being in a relationship means that your life changes. You now have to consider another person. Constantly. And you should be okay with that. If you actually care for that person, these considerations happen without even a thought in mind. Like you are driving somewhere and you want, oh, let them know before you go. Or you're gonna be running late. You let them know before you go. You're gonna be with someone that they don't like. You let them know before you go. Like you don't go because of this person's gonna be there. Like these thoughts should be naturally occurring within you if you're in a relationship. And if they're not, you either don't like the person enough or you're not ready for a relationship. Honestly, true that to the highest level, if you are not naturally being considerate of your partner, it's because you're not with the person that you should be with. I'm talking about normal, healthy people here. There's obviously very toxic people that aren't capable of this level of emotion. But if you're a regular person and you are not feeling like you should be considerate of your partner, it's because you don't like them that much. Yeah. Like if you are like, my partner had a really bad day and I should stay home and be with them and make them feel better because that would make me feel better. And your other option is like to go out and get dinner with your friends. And it's like not even a second thought to go get dinner with your friends. Well, like, and I'll give you a real life example. So the person that I am now currently dating, there have been some conversations regarding like an old friend of mine that I used to have some feelings for. Nothing ever transpired between me and this person. However, my current partner didn't appreciate me having a friendship where we, you know, sometimes he would reach out and we would chat. He didn't appreciate that. At first I was like, well, he, but we're just friends. Nothing is serious. Nothing. It doesn't mean anything to me. I don't think it means anything to him. I would actually bet my left fucking nut that it doesn't mean anything to him because it never fucking did. Otherwise I would have probably dated him anyways. And I remember being like, you know, getting into a new relationship. I don't like this control feeling over my life, but upon, you know, just naturally upon time passing when this person, this old friend of mine would reach out to me, I just stopped responding. I didn't want to respond. I didn't want to talk to this person. I did not care to reply, but I have been in relationships where not necessarily the same situation, but I can think of a specific relationship where I was dating somebody. I thought that I liked them, but the certain requests that they were making that they didn't appreciate of me, which I thought were unreasonable, kind of the same situation with the situation I'm in right now or was in with this old friend of mine is unreasonable in my head because there's nothing to it, you know? However, I care about how it makes my current partner feel. So that is why I no longer do it. In this past relationship, I didn't really, I cared for this person, just not in the degree that I should have. And I was obviously young at the time. So I wasn't able to- Not in the degree that you were willing to inconvenience yourself. Yeah, which yeah. I think at the time, if I had been a little bit older and more experienced, I would have been able to say, okay, it's probably because I don't feel these strong feelings for this person that I should to do these types it's of things. It's not worth it for you to sacrifice something that you want yeah. in order to make somebody else happy. That's uh, Let me be clear. Like I'm not doing anything bad, never any ill intent, never cheating, never anything bad. However, it doesn't matter if you're not doing anything bad. If it's hurting the person that you're with or the person that you love, then you just shouldn't do it. And that's the thing is like your partner would never know, but can you do the right thing when your partner's not watching and they will never find out just because it makes you feel better? If it makes you feel better to do the right thing for your partner, then you're on the right track with that person. Then you actually love that person. And care about that person to a point where it's like doing the thing that would upset them actually upsets you. Yeah. Because you're like, fuck, I know. And, or like imagining them finding out or knowing about it, even if it means nothing to you or is not a big deal in your mind or in your eyes, like you don't want to even do it because you don't want to hurt them even theoretically. I think it's very difficult in the beginning of relationships in the first like three to six weeks, because especially. Because you lack trust at that time. You don't, you lack trust. You lack lack connection, you lack experience, and you lack emotional connection at that point, regardless of how much you like that person, you had a whole nother life before you were with them. And all of a sudden you have a partner and your previous life is still attached to you because it was not that long ago. And there's maybe still people from your past that are hitting you up, or there may be still parts of your past that you haven't completely shut off yet, or you haven't completely cut off yet. Not that I'm saying in any instance that it's okay to talk to people when you're in a relationship, but I'm talking very early stages before you have made a full commitment to your new partner and you still have experiences with old people in your life, it's really hard to know when should I completely stop these interactions? And I think that's something you kind of learn when you find somebody that you really love.
love. I was about to say, you'll know when to stop the interaction. Because there's no question, yeah. It's obviously premature of me to say this in like my current relationship, but I will say I've been in a previous relationship where I thought he was making unreasonable requests for things that made him uncomfortable or things that he didn't like. And I still to this day think they're unreasonable, but now in hindsight, considering the relationship I'm in now and the requests and things that bother him, it's not even a question. Like Madison said it best. He wouldn't even know if I were to respond to a person that means nothing to me. That's just a friend. But because I know that if he were to find out or just in general, even if he never knew, it's still disrespectful. It makes me not want to do it. And that's how I know that even if you are a good, loyal person, it's easy to tell if you don't really like somebody, if you aren't willing to put aside your own personal beliefs on things within your past life and how it might make you feel or how it might actually be, then you probably just don't really care about that person that much. And I think like truly genuinely, if you're wondering if you like somebody or if you care about somebody or what the validity of your relationship is, like that is such a huge indicator. The most obvious sign that you're in a good relationship is when your partner's requests are not unreasonable. Because when someone is asking you, you can't go to the grocery store without me, or I need to have access to your phone 24 seven or unreasonable requests that are toxic, controlling, demanding. And you kind of pull back, like I'm my own person. I deserve to have my own life outside of you. If someone is not allowing you to have your own space because they don't trust you or they have their own insecurities, that's really a person that you should consider what your long-term is going to look like. Being controlled by somebody, it doesn't matter how long you've been with them or what your relationship looks like. If somebody is telling you what you can and can't do, you're in a bad place. You should be making a decision to do or not do things that will not upset your partner because you know how it will make them feel. Somebody who loves you and trusts you is not going to have obscene requests for what you do with your life. And that goes for both sides of the relationship. Like I know that I, Madison and I were just talking off camera. I've been traumatized as we all have by toxic people and traumatized people and people that were traumatized and people that were with toxic people. Like it's the domino effect of fucking shitty relationships and breaking the cycle is being able to recognize like as much as I sometimes want to control situations in order to avoid myself getting hurt like it doesn't even really have anything to do with whether or not I trust this person it more so has to do with me feeling comfortable in a situation that I feel I have no control over because you cannot control people nor should you want to and that is where trust and like love comes into a relationship because you can't control them you can't tell them what to do. And if you find yourself doing that, you are now the toxic one. I mean, this is so cliche, but if you don't have trust, you don't have nothing. A relationship's foundation is built on trust. If you can't trust that your partner is going to show up for you, do right by you, respect you, love you, show up for you, you do not have a relationship. If you're constantly concerned that your partner is out there disrespecting you and doing things that would make you uncomfortable or make you look stupid, that is not a relationship that is going to be suitable for for a long term. So you have to assess what am I looking for? Is this really what I want for my life? Or am I just accepting this because it's what I have? The number one thing that I've learned in relationships is that if you lose your trust, you lose your relationship. There is no coming back from that. Once the trust is broken, the relationship is done. And that's why it's so hard to continue a relationship after somebody has cheated. Because of course, there's a part of you that's like, especially if you're married or have been married for a number of years and have children children together and there's a whole life that you've built. You want to make it work. You've made a commitment to make it work, but this person has wronged you in a way that no matter how much you try, it's never going to be right. It's always going to be in the back of your mind. You're always going to be wondering, why was I not enough? Why did they decide to do this to me? When are they going to do it again? What should I do to get back at them or to feel even or to get my self-confidence back? Well, I was about to say, I think the thing about like the trust being broken and not being able to retrieve it is once somebody wrongs you, then they stop trusting you because you are now out for vengeance, even if it's subconsciously. Like it starts to become a tit for tat relationship and maybe the most mature and healthy people, no, 
actually the most mature and healthy people would have left the relationship because they'd be like, I don't deserve this. But when you're deep in the fucking hell hole, you do start to do things like, okay, well, if they did that to me, then I'm going to reply to this text from this person. Or if they, if they, you know, like I'm not actually doing anything wrong. I'm not a cheater, but he's, like- He's the one who cheated on yeah. me. It doesn't matter if I respond yeah. to this DM. Or- and then they stop trusting you. And then it's just like this literal domino effect spiral of lack of trust and unhappiness. And the main thing for me too is like when somebody, proves that they're not trustworthy not a single goddamn word that comes out of their mouth after that will ever be believed by me if somebody lies to you 10 times and tells you one truth are you gonna believe it even if they swear on their mother's life that the truth is true is it something that's gonna be believable to you if they've lied to you 10 times i feel like even if somebody tells one lie out of 10 truths sometimes it's like depending on what your experience in life is and how many fucking liars you've been around and how hard it is for you to trust initially anyways my thing is what was the lie about was it a big lie was it a little lie because i'll be i'll be fucking honest i be given little white lies here and there to avoid certain situations if i know it's not a big deal however i if i found out about a little white lie because i'm so goddamn traumatized i would be fucking pissed well and that's what i was gonna say is like what is the intention behind the lie because if somebody lies a white lie in order to avoid conflict or not hurt your feelings i'm not saying it's okay but it's a little bit more understandable than if someone lies to your face because they're hiding something from you because they're ashamed or because they just don't want you to know because they were wrong. I think the issue is with any type of lying, if you lie for a good intention, once the other person finds out you're lying, there is no understanding or even believing them that when they do finally tell the truth, it's like the boy who cried wolf. Like I lied to preserve your feelings, but what if you didn't, you know? Like what if that is the truth? What if they were lying to preserve your feelings, but now you're not gonna believe them because- You don't trust them anymore. You don't trust them. Don't break somebody's trust unless you're willing to receive the consequences of that. Like, I'll be honest, I tend to like do like little white lies in relationships because I'm afraid to, you know, cause conflict, cause a rift, cause friction. Not all the time. Or to be vulnerable. Yeah, or to be vulnerable or like whatever the situation at hand looks like, I might tell like a little white lie and I don't mean any harm by it. And in the reverse though, I would fucking hate that because I feel like- How do you know what's the truth? How do you know what's the truth? And if you're going to lie, about something small, then how do I know if you're gonna be truthful about big things? Well, and it spirals so aggressively. You could be someone who's so comfortable with little white lies and all of a sudden you're a full on compulsive liar. Yeah. Because lying becomes so easy once you start allowing it to be a part of your Well, you dig a hole for yourself and it's like the web of lies. Like you gotta keep track with all that shit. That's why it's like, no matter the conflict or the issue that the little white lie that you have causes. It's It's never worth it. It's not worth it. It's so much easier to just tell the truth straight up because here's the thing if you're in a relationship and you feel like you are gonna lie about something doesn't matter how fucking small it is let's say hypothetically okay you lie about this small thing your partner finds out about it your credibility is now shot indefinitely because you're a liar and regardless if they choose to trust you or believe you after that that's okay however now you've put yourself in a position where they don't trust you they don't know if what you're saying is true or false and if something serious actually does occur your track record is shot all because you wanted to go get Chipotle one night with your best friend, but you told them you were taking a nap at home. Like it could literally be something as small so as that. So stupid. And honestly, I, I have to say that the reason I feel so secure in my relationship is because I know that this person would not lie to me and does not lie to me, even white lies. Yeah. The reason I know that is because sometimes he says shit that pisses me off. I'm like- Same. <laughs> Not him, but... No, but like, why? Because it's not worth it to him to lie to me. And I think this is why it's so important to build the foundation with a relationship on the things that you need, not just the things that you want or the things that are lustful or exciting. But when I was calling an interview, when I was interviewing this man, I could see from the day I met him that he was honest to a fault. I'm like, sometimes Just you keep can it. hold back a little bit. You don't have to say everything, but he's the type of person where he would rather hurt somebody's feelings with honesty than be someone who is viewed as a liar in any light, whether that be with work, family. I mean, sometimes his family will be like, we can't make it to a family event or something. And I'll be like, just tell him you don't feel good. He's like, I'm not gonna say that. We can't come don't have time. I'm like, (laughs) but that's how I know that man. 
honestly, this, the person that I'm seeing right now too, like we were in a little bit of an argument earlier about some honesty that he gave me a couple weeks ago, but it's like, would I rather him not tell me? No. However, if you're going to tell the truth, you're going to have to be able to like be deal with it. Be subtle the... about it. Like sometimes men. Well, sometimes it's okay to not like tell me literally exactly. Divulge every detail. But if you're going to be that person, which same with you, like at least I know they're not a liar. Allie looked at me earlier tonight and she's like, I know I'm in the wrong because you're telling me I'm in the wrong. <laughs> Cause like I, I'll be the first to say you gotta knock it the fuck off. Or well, on, the, on the other side, of that that's not okay. Here's the thing: like the situation I was in, he was too honest. I asked. He was too honest. Did I want him to lie? No. Did I want to hear the answer that he had? No. Is it now affecting our relationship three weeks later? Sometimes. Potentially. Occasionally, occasionally it does. Is it something I need to get past? Yes. Do I love this person because of how honest they are and how I feel like I literally can trust any word that comes out of their mouth? Yeah. It's Un- worth it. Fortunately. It's worth it because the level of honesty that my man has brought me has made it so that I can be so vulnerable to a point where I don't feel like I have to hide anything about myself. I even came to him with something that I normally would have hidden or have been ashamed of but was able to tell him freely because he's made me so comfortable in the truth of our relationship. He will never judge me. I will never judge him. And we will never lie to each other. And the truest thing I've ever heard, if a man's telling you something you don't want to hear, at least he's not lying to you. Period. Because these men be lying in the streets. Lying through their bum holes, lying through their ears, like lying if, out their eyes, like if lying they, with their tears. Like if I'm they... Done. Okay. <laughs> Like if they could tell you something to soften the blow, why wouldn't they? If they're telling you something that you don't want to hear, don't fucking try to make sense of it. Don't try to make excuses for it. Don't try to change what they're telling you. They're telling you the truth because they feel that way. I think somebody said something one time. I won't quote the podcast or I'm the person. I'm already rolling my eyes. Or the person who said it, but I think they said, if somebody tells you something, believe them. I think it was me. It was Steve Harvey. It remember? was Steve Harvey and then it was me. It was first it was Steve Harvey, then it was Pillboy Cruz. Mm-hmm. And then on a the third streak, it was Madison Riccio. Mm-hmm. Riccio? Riccio! Oh, you guys don't know my last name. Risha. Yeah, Dean. Madison Dean. Listen, baddies. It's a short pod tonight. We're trying to go catch a lick for Halloween. If you okay. know what I mean. Really quickly, if anyone that works with me is listening, tune out because I'm going to rant about work right now. Tomorrow is a Friday. It's also a holiday. We're moving buildings, we're moving warehouses. I work for a lash company. They have a big ass fucking warehouse. I have to go in at 9 a.m. Normally I start at 9.30. 9 a.m. to move boxes to the new building to lift boxes pack them tape them put them on pallets put them on a what's it called uh uh hold on hold on a crane no a cr- <laughs> put them on a crane what are we fucking the two dumbest people that ever lived put them on pallets put them on a fucking forklift and then move them into a truck and then take them and then move them off the truck and then into the new warehouse. All I have to say is awful. when am I supposed to get my actual work done? Second thing I have to say, I also, oh, you thought I was fucking done? Have to go in on fucking Saturday and do the same shit. Saturday, Saturday. Here's the thing about work. This is just like a perfect finishing point. If your job is taking advantage of you or anyone is taking advantage of you, you know, you know what that feels like. And you shouldn't allow someone to take advantage of you just because you feel like you need to be where you're at. Your value value is only where you place it. If you devalue yourself, everyone else will too. 100%. I think the thing that has given me the most confidence in the last couple years is recognizing that I don't need to stay somewhere. I can go do whatever I want. Whatever I put my heart and my mind to, I've proven to myself over and over again that I can do it and I can do it well and I can do it successfully. Confidence, my girl. So believe in yourself and don't ever stay somewhere where you're being taken advantage of treated poorly this goes for jobs relationships family members friendships literally anything know your worth and don't be afraid to speak up for yourself like i i genuinely think that something that this society nowadays lacks is the ability to stand up for yourself speak up for yourself confrontation 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 is not a bad thing at all confrontation doesn't need to like it's given a negative connotation right because when you're confronting somebody there's usually an issue conflict 100 conflict 100 there's a right way to do it and I think people respect you more when you are able to have a little bit of a backbone, say what you're thinking and what you're feeling in a respectful manner. And if you're talking to a reasonable person, they'll understand. 
they will agree with you nine times out of 10. Most certainly somebody will walk over you if you give them the opportunity to. And I actually just had a recent experience with this where I was working with a male agent who has done 10,000 deals. He's been in the business for 40 years and he wanted to come at me a little bit sideways because I'm a young female agent and don't get me wrong, I'm experienced, but not as experienced as him. And he was like trying to tell me what to do. I literally said, hey, I'm gonna stop you. Do not tell me how to do my job. I know how to do my job. That's why I'm here. He said, oh, I am so so sorry. If you need anything, let me know. I haven't heard a fucking word. I'm since. not a peep. And that's that on standing up for yourself. Yeah. And it doesn't even need to be that like in your face. Said, like, don't tell me this, this and he that. He hated it, honestly. Yeah, no, he does. And some people do. And Madison's definitely not somebody that I would ever fuck with in like a professional setting. In a personal <laughs> setting, I'll throw hands. In a professional setting, I feel like she would run circles around me. But she's like terrifying because she's smart and she's quick and she's good with her words. And she's like knows what the fuck she's talking about. And she doesn't get emotional. She's very logical. Me, I am very emotional. However, I recently have become the type of person that kind of just if I'm dealing with a conflict specifically at work this podcast is taking a pivot but I feel like this pertains to a lot of different facets in life too so take what you will from it but I know my worth and it's taken me years to get there so if you're not there yet like don't worry you'll take get your there time. yeah like fake it till you make have it is my advice have yeah have confidence in yourself fake it yep. till you make it like Deep down, everyone knows what they're capable of. If you've proven it yet or not may dictate whether or not you actually believe that it within yourself. But I always knew that I had the abilities of the things that I'm doing now. Now I'm doing it. So now I have blind fucking faith. And I'm like, listen. It's if, repetitive consistency with standing up for yourself. Yeah, if something that I don't agree with or if I feel like I'm being slighted or, you know, talked down on or treated as lesser than, I'm going to fucking say it. If I feel like something is unfair, I'm going to bring it up. And I guess my theory on why people don't normally do this is because not do they, it's not that they don't want to cause conflict. It's because they don't want to lose the position that they're in or they don't want to lose the relationship that they're in or they don't want to lose something. They don't want to. It's a loss by mindset. Yeah. So for me, I think when I started to realize that I will be good with or without, if these people want me and I want to be here, then we need to come to an understanding that's mutual, a mutual respect, a mutual understanding and a mutual relationship that is mutually beneficial. And ironically enough, in doing this, I feel like I have almost put myself in more of a position to be respected. A better position. You have to flip your mindset that when you stand up for yourself, you're not losing something. If you lose something by standing up for yourself, it was never meant it for was you in the not first place. something that should have been a part of your life. Yeah. I saw something that I absolutely loved that said, you cannot have your buttons pushed by someone if those buttons do not exist. So if you're getting triggered or instigated or upset by something that somebody did, it's only because you allowed those buttons to be presented to them. If those buttons didn't exist, there would be nothing for them to press. That is honestly such a good like analogy because the only time that you ever actually really get offended by something that somebody says is if there's a little bit of truth to it. There's If there's no button, there's no reaction. Yeah. They can't press it. You don't feel anything. Yeah. Remove your buttons, remove the reaction. Yeah. Nobody is in control of the way you feel except for yourself. Nobody can make you feel bad except for yourself. You have control over your own life. Just remember that. And that's that on Bad Therapy, episode 40. Happy Halloween, buddies! Happy Halloween. Go get fucking drunk and wild and crazy for both of us. Go cheat on your boyfriend. Go hook up with your ex. No, no, no. No, she doesn't mean it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, don't do any of that. But go live the life that neither of us can or ever will live. This is why people say, no wonder it's called bad therapy. Yeah, we didn't say it was good therapy. <laughs> Every time someone comments that, I'm like, groundbreaking. Like, wow. You're shaking the earth. You are acting like we didn't think of this before we titled when it we bad therapy. The podcast. Yeah. Bye, baddies. Cheers to that.